Uh, I just want to welcome everyone to um, our panel discussion today. We're so thankful to have you all here. It's a wonderful group today. Um, so our special guest today, maybe um, uh, I'd like to have Janet perhaps introduce everyone since you're much more familiar um, with, the, with the group. So Janet, um, who is a member of our convening team of the Agriculture Working Group, um, will we'll introduce the, the speakers today. Of course, Janet's one of them. Thank you so much for inviting us. And I just want to introduce on the, on the uh, group today um, is many people from Uganda. So there's junior youth, there's children, there's the planters, there's the organizers, and you're going to meet them better as we go through the PowerPoint. So I really just want to say I'm trying to speak as little as possible and have them speak as much as possible. Emma Bowers is um, a friend who's living in Kampala and has been going every week to one of the schools where we have education programs going on. And so I just, as I go through the, 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 the slideshow, you'll meet us better. But I should just say that um, I'm a, a social forester by training and my husband's a, a tree breeder by training. And we, we have the joy of being in Uganda for some time. And, and so this is sharing with you. And the Ugandan friends are continuing with, with the, the activities that, that we were just so fortunate to, to be able to be part of there. Okay, so it's, it's called the power of loving collaboration to transform agriculture to agroecology. And I have to see how I can move the page forward. That's what I don't know how to do. Okay, just a sec. <laughs> how do I go? There we go. Okay, now why do we want to transition? It's because over 30% of greenhouse gases are caused by the current destructive agriculture. And there's 87% of global subsidies provided to those methods. And that's over 500 billion a year goes to those destructive forms of agriculture that if we could transition to a more regenerative agroecology approach, then we would actually draw carbon down from the atmosphere and it would help in so many ways that um, I hope that you'll see in the, in the slideshow as we go forward. And you can see Africa here, just this little bit of green here in this lake. This is where we, we were, our, our friends here from Uganda are. It's right there at the edge of that green and the, the brown, oops. <laughs> I'm just getting used to how much to move them. Ah. I don't know how to make it just go one slide at a time. Sorry. Okay, so we were first asked to talk about the Food System Game Changers Lab, which took place for a few months before the UN Food Summit last year. And it was a good effort to share what's going on in the world to try to transition. So our group, we formed a group at the Victoria Nile Uganda called Partners Empowering Agroecology Community Education. And I don't know how to get that thing. I don't want that thing there. So this is where we are right down here. Uganda here, see Lake Victoria is the second largest lake in the world next to Lake Superior. And we were right here where the Nile comes out. We could see it, we could walk to it. Where the Nile River comes out of Lake Victoria is where we were staying. And all around this area, is where these activities have been taking place. So that's the name of our group. And it's, you can see the friends here. It's Charles is there, Peter is here, Tony. And the group is called Partners Empowering Agroecology Community Education. And I'm gonna, hopefully the next slide is going to show you. Oh, <sighs> sorry. I don't know why it wants to go too many at once. Do I just, aha, uh -huh, okay. There we are. And there's a picture of the Nile River coming out of Lake Victoria. And um, you can see it's green, but you can see there's already a lot of erosion and, and more and more trees are being cut down. And this is, you know, an area where people also have fish and other, but even the fish are getting overfished. So it's an area where we still have to work and plant more trees. And um, I just put a quotation here from Bahá'u'lláh that says, Every man of discernment while walking upon the earth feeleth indeed abashed, inasmuch as he is fully aware that the thing which is the source of his prosperity, his wealth, his might, his exaltation, his advancement and power is as ordained by God, the very earth trodden beneath the feet of all men. 
And these are all the partners. There's Girls for Climate Action and Buseno Fruits. And you're going to hear more about these people as we go through the slideshow. React Now, Save Young Mothers, Echo Shelter, Namtumba, Echo Mamas, First Line School in Natchibizi, the Social Justice Clubs of Bukaya and Kansas, Missouri. I'll tell you more about that story. Reinhardt Foundation, the Junior Youth Wanyange and who International Tree Foundation give them some support, the Vida and Malcolm Lake. Chikondo Promoters of Community Wellbeing is another village. Mr. Kalanga of Chimanyangeo Foundation. He gave us a lot of support. He's been measuring jackfruit trees this weekend. Teresa Gitonga of the International Tree Foundation was a big advisor. Emma Bowers, who you hear from soon, she's a math teacher. A lot of calculating carbon sequestration. <laughs> anyway, those are some partners there. Oh, wait, it went too fast. I don't know how to make this thing go just one at a time, but anyway. So those are the, some of the partners. Okay, so this group of partners collaborated with many groups around the world in this Food System Game Changers Lab to contribute to regenerative agriculture, agroecology, including inventors of bioherbicide, oxygenated irrigation water, researchers in wetlands, income generating activities, helping small farmers whose land is so degraded that they commit suicide. Every week we met to learn from each other and we created a shared idea that would advance regenerative methods Many people thought a digital platform to bring solutions and experiences together would assist knowledge to be available to more people and local voices to be added to the platform. But this is what Abdul Baha said, knowledge is not enough. We hope by the love of God, we shall put it, this knowledge into practice. A spiritual universal force is needed for this. Meetings are good for engendering spiritual force. To know that it is possible to reach a state of perfection is good. To march forward on the path is better. To know that pure and to be merciful is good and pleases God. But knowledge alone does not feed the starving man, nor can the poor be warmed by knowledge or words in the bitter winter. We must give the practical help of loving kindness. So I'm just going to show you some of the loving kindness that was shared with us and still continuing in Uganda. So this is. On the left here is um, Pius, who's the, one of the co-founders of the Girls for Climate Action. And he's at one of the many schools they've been to giving tree seedlings to the children and explaining to them about climate change. And, and they train ca climate captains. And those climate captains help the kids plant trees. They have orchard weeks. They plant trees for the king's birthday. They get birthday gifts. When it's their birthday, they get the birthday gift of a tree for themselves. And so there's, their survival rates are over 90%. And here in the middle here is the Charles, you see in the Reinhardt Foundation and his friends, <laughs> Peter and so on. And on the right, you see the girls learning the laptops. So those laptops were donated by Labdu, but we also had laptops donated by the junior youth clubs of Kansas, Missouri. And those girls there, you know, in Uganda, if you don't have, if, you, if you're not in school or you don't have means, you get married off as a teenager or you, you you're vulnerable, you have no chance to even eat. So there's a lot of teenage moms. And so Peter that you'll meet, he's been training them in vocational skills. And one of these girls has actually become uh, so good at the laptops that she's now working in the mayor's office, he's <laughs> ginger. Okay, so 2.5 billion people are smallholder farmers who produce over 60% of the world's food. They receive no subsidies. They're the poorest people on the planet, the least educated. They have no access to capital, capital to add value to their produce. They have no access to markets except through middlemen. Most of them are women who don't own the land that they cultivate. So you see a little boy holding the jackfruit. <laughs> These are actually relatives of my son and daughter-in-law. and you know, this is, this is their food, that, that food. Okay, now I wanted to, oh, I, what has happened to Gusena Fruits? Okay, here, I want to just, this is one of our partners, actually one of the founding partners of Partners Empowering Agology is, um, is Gusena Fruits, but I have to find out where did she go? <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, there we are. So this is Judith Bakiri. Now to other stories. 
19 years ago, Judith Bakia quit our NGO job to start farming. A 100-acre farm of fruit trees, um, herbs Bakidia, and animals runs on a concept called permaculture, where nothing is wasted. Is Judith has also been working to transfer this knowledge to the communities around her. <laughs> I'm Judith Bakidia, the managing director of Bosaino Fruits and Herbs. This is a 1,064 acres of land located in four districts of Uganda. Where we are today, it is 60 acres where we are growing fruits, avocado, mangoes, and jackfruit. And we are perhaps the largest grower where we are today in Uganda. When we first started agriculture here, these were bare lands. That were with a lot of soil erosion and gadgets. And the first thing we did was to bring back life. That is planting trees, bringing a lot of manure, and putting in the gardens, and then start planting trees all around. Traditionally, in Africa and in Uganda, we grew our crops as a, a forest. In the forest, you find the trees, you find climbers, you find animals. And people walked in, harvested, and walked out. And that concept is disappearing. We have set up this farm as a permaculture farm. And permaculture means that we are integrating a lot of crops and animals. And we do zero tillage. We harvest water so that we can preserve the environment. And when you get here, it looks like a forest. In doing this, we are working with 1,250 families, majority of who are women, because they have a lot of indigenous knowledge that they are bringing out. And it is this knowledge that we are passing on to the young generation. You must work with the community around you. And we call this concept working with the village. So we invite the smallholder farmers around us, they come in the farm, and they are able to grow their groundnuts, their beans, for food. And then in turn, they clear the gardens. We want to be an example because the issue of climate change is a major world issue. And if you come to eastern Uganda, with the growing of sugarcane everywhere, people have cut down trees. So this is a model for learning, for people to come here and learn that you can work within minimum resources and you preserve the environment and at the same time you make money. Yeah. I don't want that one. I want to go back. I have to go back to the... Um, Not the actual one. That's to be at the end. That's to be at the end. Okay, 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 I see it now. All right, so that was that was Judith of Buseno Fruits. I don't know if Judith made it on or not. If she's there or not. It's the, the where she stays is a bit in the countryside, and the internet is even worse there. <laughs> but anyway, so just to say that Judith has been trying to do agroecology and restoring de degraded land for over twenty years. So she's a and she has an agroecology skills training center. So, and it's beautiful and she and she's exports avocados and jackfruits and she goes around, you know, sometimes she won't sleep for three nights collecting all the jackfruits from the different farmers around and making sure they get to the market and so on. Um, okay, now the next one, how do I do the next Touch one? Touch on these, uh, which one do you want? Okay, now I want this one. That's okay. one of our partners is Buseno Foods. Okay, this no, is no, another no. partner is React Now Save Young Mothers. And I know Peter is here, I see him. And over the years, he's trained 900 of these young moms to have vocational skills. And so one of the things they're doing now is happily planting trees, and making tree nurseries as one of their skills. Hi everyone, I'm Tivoka Peter, founder of React Now Save Young Mothers. It's a non-profitable organization which started in 2016. React Now Save Young Mothers, we offer free vocational skills to young mothers, orphans, school dropouts, 
these young mothers they get a lot of challenges because most of them they come from poor families whereby they don't get chance to go to school so most of them they leave marry them when they are still young that's why they get young pregnant and whereby they cannot compete on job employment because they don't have paperwork so where react now comes in and help to offer them some vocational skills such that they can help their kids family and themselves so react now save young mothers have collaborated with peace whereby these young mothers they come and help in growing nursery beds helping these small older farmers to grow trees and help them in watering take care of no, 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 no. and we are so working together with peace so we are here thinking for fundraising funding to help such good organization like peace to take care of our environment because most of the people they have cut trees down and you see the challenges which we are getting right now so i'm offering to react now save young mothers to anyone who can donate fundraise we are all welcome thank you very much okay now um what we're doing actually i don't know if john kendall's on the call but we're doing something called fair trade and ecosystem services so rather than donations the farmers are earning the funds mm -hmm. because the carbon credits are being re are being used for microcredit financing and different incentives for maintaining the trees. But I'll get to that more later. So um, the next one is uh, Charles. Yes, hello. Charles Kamia from Uganda and uh, I'm a founder of uh, an organization called Reinhardt Foundation. Uh, it is basically an organization that looks at uh, empowering the needy youth. Having grown up as a total orphan, I know what it means to grow up in an African society as an orphan. So it is from this motivation that I started up this organization basically to help my fellow orphans, uh, uh, less privileged people in our communities, the elderly, the needy elderly, and so forth. So with the youth, uh, with the needy youth, we want to provide practical skills like welding and carpentry, uh, liquid soap making, and so forth. Um, coming to know about peace, it, it came as a motivation because as human beings, as people who live uh, in this globe system, it is, uh, everyone's, it is everyone's point to cater for, for climate and to care for, for our environment. So peace, basically, uh, we joined hands on a motivation of uh, trying to help our fellow communities restore uh, climate and its changes. And uh, having learned about it, of course, we joined hands. And from that point, we started uh, partnering with peace on grounds of coming up with nursery beds, uh, reaching out to different farmers who could, you know, join us and plant these trees in our communities. Because you realize it is one of the sustainable development goals that are really helping the global system to restore, to bring up <coughs> what uh, industrialization and other activities have caused on this planet. Yeah, so it is a big motivation to work with peace on a uh, weekly basis uh, because we find it more and more and more important to to help communities restore climate yeah so looking forward and we call upon each and everyone to partner with us both in Reynard Foundation and as well as peace thank you Yes, hello. My name Sorry. is Charles Kamia Sorry. from Uganda. Okay. Now go to the next one. Is This is um, Hope, and she's not only showing us how to do poultry farming, 
but she also gives the um, manure so that the nursery beds have, have good organic matter in there. And the trees can be established well. Hello, I'm called Nekesa Hope, a poultry farmer. I rear chickens, mass production of eggs and chicks. And here, what you see here is, is a poultry farm with croilers, layers, I also rear turkeys. What I'm going to show here, I have an incubator which holds 3,000 3, eggs. That means that I can raise 3,000 chicks. And what you are seeing here, incubator, if I open, these are the eggs, these are the chicks being, being born. They will be taken from here, they will be taken to the brood where they will be raised to get a big one. Right here, these are turkeys, turkey with its young ones, and one cock. Each with dif in different tubicles. That is a fertilization. These are the mothers to, to the chicks being hatched the other side. We get eggs. That, these are, they are eggs here. Then we get those eggs and put them in the incubator to get the chicks. Having learned about this, I discovered that it was important to provide organic fertilizers to their farms for, to help in tree planting and also to smallholder mm -hmm. farmers to help them in their gardens. What we do here, we get fertilizers from the chickens and mix them in the soil. These are added in, in these are added in the soil for tree planting. Then we plant trees as you can see. This is a nursery bed to be planted by people. Hello, I'm called Nekesa Hope, a poultry farmer. I rear chickens, mass production of eggs and chicks. And mm -hmm. here, what yeah, you're doing great. Okay, now. Um, Emma, so I'll start with the, the video and then you'll talk about the school or you want to start with, this, with the speaking? The video first? Okay. No, no, the yeah. video first is great. Okay. All right. So this is one of the schools that we work with. You know, I can only give you glimpses of the number of people that have come together to collaborate. And the way it all started is with me just doing one children's class. I saw all these children sitting, playing all the time outside of this out of Tony's place where he makes juice and I like the fresh fruit juice. One day I said, Tony, can I do a children's class here? You know, you always have children playing happily here. He said, okay. So I started doing the children's class. And from that, people who were interested in the songs, you know, love, 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 love your fellow man. Justice is a noble way. Justice brings a brighter day. You know, these type of songs, people were attracted to the songs of the children. And so and so I, I'm trying to show you that everything is kind of integrated. We didn't get all this collaboration because we talked about trees. We got all this collaboration because people were attracted to those spiritual qualities that this, the children were singing about and they could see the, the happiness of the children. So I'm gonna show you this. This is just one of the schools. <laughs> Janet. Hello, this is First Line Junior School. As a school, we help out community to in good nutrition. For example, if you look at these kids in the video, they'd come to take nutritious porridge and they do it this every day so that the whole community is nutritious so that we avoid diseases like kwashako in the community. We also teach children the use and the importance of planting trees. For example, in the video, we teach them how to water, when to water the, the planted trees. 
At first line also, we, we teach children computer. We teach the community computer so that they are knowledgeable about the current technology. We also teach the children and the community about the Ruhi Institute program at first junior at first line junior school. Hello, junior school. As a school, we help out community. <laughs> okay, now Emma's going to speak to that because Emma's been going to the school every week. She goes from Kampala, it's like two or three hours to the school every week to help them get from, with the laptops that they got, got donated and to teach math. So Emma, please. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I'm I feel so lucky that I um I met Janet and um and everyone when we were tree planting once at the mayor's um in Ginger and um I got chatting to someone there who turned out to be the headmaster of First Line Junior School, um Cyrus, who's a really amazing, amazing man. And and I basically, um, I went once to kind of see the school and I just, I loved it so much. I, I've kept coming back every week. It's a really, really special place. You walk down like a tiny, um, it's like a, a tiny um, pathway off the, off from the village. And when you enter, you can't believe that there's, um, that there's 80 children who, most of whom are living in the school. Um, and the children come from all over the, um, they they come from all over Uganda. Uh, we went. We've been to um, to visit loads of different places to um, find children. They come and as as boarders, um, uh, in, and they come to stay for the whole term. And the, the as you saw in the video, the children come from the age of three, and it's just the most amazingly well run resource school. And it's um, yeah, I'm, I feel really lucky to be to be a part of it. And um, the the IT program, which I think Tony is going to speak about um, a bit later, it's amazing to see what can be done with just a few a few laptops, a few secondhand laptops. So I plead to anyone on this call, if you if you do have any or you know of any secondhand laptops that can somehow be given to somebody who might be traveling to Uganda. Um, that would be hugely appreciated and will make a massive, massive difference um, difference to the IT programme. I, I teach maths um, to eight-year-olds and up to 12-year-olds. And um, yeah, the children are just absolutely desperate to learn. There's been no school in Uganda for the last two years. So it's really such a privilege to be able to, to speak, um, to, to be able to teach children who are so, so um, keen to learn. And yeah, it's been a real honor to be, to be involved in the school and with peace. Thank you, love. Thank you, Emma. I, you know, I, I feel bad. I have to keep moving on because I'm trying to finish within the right amount of time. But so First Line School is in a place called Nachibizi and we have um, two children's classes there, junior youth and the computer training and also the, I think we have at least two nurseries in that, in that area, Nachibizi. Okay, the next area we're going to is called Namatumba. Um, okay, and, the, and Echo Shelter was again started before you know, long before we got there, we just kind of, brought, people just came together. That was the, and there's the map here that shows the, it, the Namatumba goes, area and the places where they have nurseries already. Can make it yeah. larger so they can see the map. Oh, you can make it larger. Hopefully it's going to work. 
Oh, you don't want your skin. I wanted to do Namatumba first, but anyway, here. Maybe it's not going to work for us. Don't get that. Hi, everyone. I'm Cody Mwagaru. I work with Echo Shelter. I'm Goro Hubbard, working with Echo Shelter, Namatumba District, located alongside Igangambare um, Highway. My name's uh, Mwaga Julius. I work with Echo Shelter Uganda. So we rented off this place uh, purposely to set up three nurseries uh, for our community because we found out that uh, our community, uh, in our community, people are cutting down trees. They are practicing deforestation. So what we do, we collect seedlings and uh, seeds from marketplaces and from homes. So we bring them right here that uh, we may raise uh, the seeds and then afterwards we give them back to our communities, schools, uh, hospitals and also we give also women uh, fruits like jackfruit, uh, giant brandila uh, so that they may uh, give fruits to their children because most of the children in our community are malnourished. So what we do, we, we raise jackfruit, giant granula, and uh, passion fruit so that we may also try to give a better kind of nutrition to, to the children around. So right here, right here, there are uh, hundreds of uh, of uh, Musizi seeds inside here and uh, also here here we have jackfruit so we planted uh, a lot of jackfruit right here and uh, this is uh, Moringa so we have also right here we have some Moringa uh, seedlings coming up so here in this bed we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, eucalyptus seeds, uh, so we are expecting maybe after two weeks or two after three weeks they will start coming up. So here, so right here we have uh, what we call the nkoge nkoge seeds here. So we are expecting that. They are also good for fruits. And uh, here, these ones are giant grandilla. Uh, it's, uh, so we are expecting maybe tomorrow to give them out to some mamas around our community so that the children and their families may, may get vitamin C. So we are expecting to expand the project that uh, we may also kind of uh, fight, uh, uh, fight, fight the cutting down of trees. We want also to plant a variety of trees in our communities because now uh, there is this issue of climate, climate change. So as Eco Shelter, we want to raise a number of seed, seed seedlings like the Musizi and so on that we may fight this kind, uh, uh, the, the, the climatic change. Like right now it's hot here because people are cutting down trees. So we want to plant and, uh, and uh, plant again the seeds in our communities. Uh, this well, uh, it does not benefit only Eco Shelter as a, a, a tree project, but, uh, but also uh, our community benefits from it. So uh, uh, we are planning to, to maybe build a borehole right here instead of here because uh, the, uh, the leaves fall inside right there. But this is what we use to water the seedlings and also uh, wash the utensils. And also for, they use also for, uh, they use this water for bathing yeah, and washing clothes. Right. So thank you so much.
God bless you. Hi everyone, I'm Cody Mwagaru. Okay, now the next one is Bonita. Okay, so I, I should just make sure that there's no one actually here from Girls for Climate if Jonita or Pius are here. Otherwise, I'll show this. So they started this Girls for Climate Action about seven years ago, and they go around the schools and the, they make orchard weeks. And I think I mentioned already. So this is just to introduce Jonita to you. Um, she's just been named one of the most uh, 100 influential African youth, um, mm -hmm. some, some kind of an award for that. <laughs> She was at the um, COP26, the um, UN meeting in October and in Glasgow and, um, and she met um, the carbon streaming person, John Kendall. <laughs> so that's why we're developing this eco fair trade and ecosystems um, project, which is, go you know, which is going, and it's not finished yet. We're just developing the, the um, project idea notes. My name is Joanne from Uganda. I'm the co-founder and uh, team lead at Girls for Climate Action, where we are putting young women and girls at the forefront of climate action. Super excited to be uh, an Earth champion. And uh, my message to the world today is to be responsible for our environment because there is no planet B. Remember, our local actions will lead to a global impact. Thank you. Okay, and so um, we have more projects. We'll show Teresa Gitonga next. I'll just show a little bit of this one. It's a little bit long, and I think Teresa's on the. And the the one that I like the best is where she's talking about the importance of women's empowerment. But I, where is that one? I am the manager of International Tree Foundation, in charge of a campaign whereby we are planting twenty million trees in and allowed uh, Kenya water towers or forests. And uh, we are doing this together with the community members. We are doing this together with the local uh, institutions. And also you are welcomed to be part of this. We are going to do this by 2024. Our target is to plant 20 million trees by 2024. We are not only planting trees, but we are making changes in terms of uh, improving the livelihood of 50,000 community members. We are also, this will be contributing also toward improving the life of uh, women, ensuring that uh, we, are, uh, we are improving the livelihoods of those specific women who are going very long distance in search of uh, water. And uh, this, we have already started the initiative, and uh, in the last two years, we, by the end of this year, we'll be able to have done our first million. We have already planted 20, uh, 1 million trees, and this is in Mount Kenya region, together with our partners. And uh, it is very interesting, I was there last week, and uh, the survival rate is very impressive. It's about... Uh, 90 to 95 percent in some areas in the schools the the success is very impressive we are also working with the youth and uh, young people we are working with the school kids to plant trees to make sure they are interested in planting trees in their schools because we want to develop a generation that will be able not only to plant trees but they will be able to ensure that those trees grow And we are I'll just let it because our time is short, so I don't want to take up all the time. But and I think Teresa is here, so she can ask, when we have the question and answer, you can ask more. But I love when she talks about the importance of women being able to make decisions about things. So hopefully we'll come to that. And Teresa's been helping me. Like when I'm stuck, I phone her. I say, How should we make sure we engage the smallholder farmers so that these projects are their projects? And she will help me a lot. Um, 
Okay, now the this is Boutiki is the Boutiki children's class. This is the other side of the, the Nile River from where we were living. Um, but we actually have planted trees over here as well. I pass the gems. Banunji, the Melissa Baptist Church. I thank God because you are still right there. I'm still here uh, caring for the trees you gave me. I planted them, I germinated. I'm caring them, I weighed the grass. So they are growing very well. And the others need weeding mm -hmm. on your side. Hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah. It needs weeding, but I haven't weeded yet. But it, on my side, um, and they are growing well. Yeah. Even yours are growing well. Yeah. Don't wanna let you down. You can be my friend. Don't wanna break your heart. I love you, no matter where you're from or how you look. You can be my friend. I love you. If you are my friend, now broke your heart, may you In Sabrai Sade, I like to do Zindi. Shining through goodness, all justice is a win. We know Abdul Bahushen, share our love and show we can. He was God's heart in order to bring happiness he was content with bliss be an ever flowing sea is it true that if you do happiness will come to you touch your heart every every day is not something you can Every, every day is not something you can give away. You guys know, would be a bit emotional seeing all these three friends again. Um, Okay, so this is some more of the tree nurseries. I just can't show all of them. There's different villages, Chikondo, Kamuli, um, Maraika, Wanyange, showing you all the, this, this is me and my daughter-in-law and my granddaughter planting trees with Judith. Or actually we're planting beans. <laughs> it just shows the number of nurseries and the amount of fruits you can get on one avocado tree. Okay, so how did we meet all these local people to begin to collaborate? And it's with the children's classes. So here's my daughter-in-law, Angela, teaching children. Here's the children's class that I had at Tony's place. Here's me <laughs> telling the stories from, to the children from the children's class. So people were attracted by that. And then some of the children, of course, are the junior youth age. And we were very fortunate. I was just taking a class on Zoom in one of, with an American mom, Martha Jalali. And she said her son has got a junior youth group in, in uh, Kansas and he wants to meet junior youth from Uganda. So it was about 50 of them in my living room. <laughs> you know, so then they got talking to each other and, and the junior youth in Kansas raised money for five laptops and the, the laptop, laptops were bought, bought in Kampala. It's so expensive to send them across unless somebody carries them. So they were bought in Kampala and Tony and Peter and Charles and Hope and the, uh, Paul, the different friends. It turned out Tony, the host of my children's class is actually a graduate in, in uh, computers from Macquarie University, which I had no idea that he was. <laughs> so he's been doing all this, all these photographs and all this PowerPoint's been put together by Tony. And every day they were te teaching the junior youth and the youth how to use the laptops. And also they were studying the, the books, the, the Breeze's book and so on. And um, and so the, the, the uh, well, maybe I should be quiet and let Tony speak, but um, 
Tony, do you want to say anything about your classes? I mean, they were going every day until the schools reopened a, a few weeks ago, and now they just meet on the weekends. But um, or at Natchibizi, they have the laptops actually in the school, so they move the laptops from one village to another, <laughs> so that everyone can share. And uh, so I don't know if Tony wants to speak to, to, you know, because he's been heading up the, the the training of the skills. They're learning things like Tree Mapper app. They're learning how to search for information. They're learning how to do word processing. I saw one girl from the looking, how does the cells work where the mitochondria is full on? And, uh, and, and the recording is really important. Like by seeing the Tree Mapper app, we know where the, the trees are planted and how they're doing. And then that goes immediately to uh, um, Plant for the Planet website and people can help them with the upfront costs of the of the trees. Um, Tony, are you there? Do you want to speak to this? IT training? Maybe he's not there. Tony, uh, I think Tony's here, but um, he does, I don't see, I don't see Sam. Uh, anyway, this is Kalenga. Kalenga is also a huge help. He's been teaching for years. He's tra trained over 2,000 farmers and he thinks at least a thousand of them are interested to plant more trees. And they had just the last couple, year or two with the, with the uh, COVID lockdown, they started 600 backyard gardens and they can add fruit trees to those backyard gardens. So he's going to just share a little bit of what the things that he does. And he's also a great collab, great friend. And he, he's actually the field state manager for the Chimanyu and Gayo Foundation for Science and Education, which runs the program and social action and also runs Rui book training. Uh, I'm trying to share how this is grounded, not just in science, but in the spiritual action, you know, of coming together and helping each other. Welcome, here we are, we are in, uh, in Kamuli. This is uh, one color, one color sector, and uh, we have uh, a group of tutors around uh, 16. We are 16, 16 of us here, and we are on this land here with the tutors uh, uh, practiced uh, what they are learning from the different units of the preparation for social action. And right now we are trying to look at the trees that we planted some a few, a few months ago, and we are also going to to plant more more trees. So yesterday we are looking at uh, what kind of trees that we want to have on our land. The size of the the land it's about two acres. And we discussed about what kind of trees we are going to plant here because we want to have a lot of fruit trees here. So we have orange trees that we are going to plant, uh, avocados, jackfruits, uh, mangoes, uh, sour soap, and we are also going to have musizi. We are going to have bamboo trees around. So. We are so excited to see that uh, the group is also really involved in, uh, in the activities. So we are also trying to look at the trees that we planted last time, and we've actually been able to spot a number, a number of them. Around uh, maybe 20 of them are, are doing well. So we are so excited. So right now we are going to demarcate the spots where we are going to have all these uh, fruit trees that have uh, that have mentioned. So, Jaja Janet, so this is what the team in Kamuli is doing. So we are going to have around more than a hundred trees you know, growing, growing here. So we are going to acquire more, more seedlings, all those fruit trees that I've, I've mentioned. So, cheers. Okay, and you push that. Okay, and I just wanted to mention that Kalanga also runs this NGO of his own called trueaction.org and they're setting up primary schools because lots of children don't have a chance to go to school. 
and especially if it's far away. So they're setting up all these little schools themselves in the community, just sharing whatever knowledge they have, whatever resource they have. Um, just show that website. Okay, now here's where we're going to talk about fair trade and ecosystem services, or otherwise, how can we earn these carbon sequestration funds that are available now? And so, um, John Kendall, he's a high in um, bank in Victoria and BC, and a forester, and he's worked in Congo and different countries, and he's now getting funding from Carbon Streaming Corporation, and then we have to develop all these proposals and stuff, which we've been doing to show how much carbon we can sequester by planting more trees and carbon gets sequestered in the soil and vegetation. And um, so, and the incentive comes when the trees are still growing for a few months. So that's why the farmers are taking a big effort here to protect the trees. And then it's what, when, you know, I don't know if people have heard about Wangari Matai, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for, um, women's green belt movement planting millions of trees and actually Teresa Gitonga worked with her as from from when she was a school school student anyway so she used to give just four cents a tree for trees that were still surviving after three to six months and we put in our budget I think at least 20 cents per tree which is a lot of money there it's a thousand shillings there and you need about um 200 000 shillings to send your child to school for a, a term so it's a big incentive for them to earn that, to earn those carbon funds by planting these trees. People prefer to earn it than to be, you know, having this donor mentality, but obviously they're helpful, grateful for all the donations of the 24 students who were uh, able to go to school this, this term because of the junior youth in, in um, Kansas doing a fundraiser with photographs. Um, so it, it, everything is helping for sure, but they do prefer that they have the idea that they can earn the funds by, by planting the trees to help sequester the carbon. Okay, so now 2.5 billion people are smallholder farmers who produce over 60% of the world's food. And most of those farmers are women, by the way. I've just been showing you a little bit about this little area uh, by Lake Victoria, where the river now comes out called Busoga area. It's about two and a half million people. So that's a much smaller number and it's about 10,000 square kilometers. And we've got nurseries, I think in just about every one of these districts and some, some are also spreading to other areas. The best way is for farmers to tell each other. It's definitely the best way for things to happen fast is the farmers are happy and they tell each other. Okay, I'll just pass over to Ned here. He's gonna talk about the carbon stocks of planet Earth. <laughs> oh. Okay. So this is just a big overview of the uh, whole picture that the gigatons of carbon, so in the atmosphere we've got about 750 gigatons of carbon and that's increasing by about three gigatons per year thanks to all these emissions, industrial emissions and agriculture emissions, but then carbon is fixed in the vegetation, in the soils, and in the litter. So all the afforestation projects, including ours in Uganda, are simply taking carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it into the vegetation, the soils, and the litter through the miracle of photosynthesis. Okay, I'm just about finished. <laughs> So this is just a little clip of them creating tree nurseries. Um, the fellow, let's see, I think this is Eugene on the right. He's taking it to Mbali, which is the next district over from Busoga. They have two, about 800 farmers there and 2,700 hectares ready for planting with cocoa and trees and bananas. And he lived, you know, his brother is the one that runs the first line school. So it just shows how things spread, the word spreads. <laughs>
to show you our nurseries. Here is our first nurseries. We have over 3,000 right here and above of Musizi. We are expecting to add more fruits. Oh, here is another part of na our nursery bed whereby we have over 1,500 trees. All of them, they are Musizi trees. And our mom is the one taking care of them. We are so grateful that with time we shall help her with challenges of water, whereby it's not near the source of water. Who is encouraging mommy, each and everything, facilitation of water, watering can. I know with time we shall be able to help such things. <laughs> Peace loves you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I have to leave time for questions, so I need to maybe just end here. Abdul Baha says, he who sows a seed or plants a sapling becomes the recipient of bounty, he becomes the possessor of good fortune. Abdul Baha and the Nature of the Nations. So at the very end, I want to share this song, but this is now the time for question and answers. I'm sorry if I went a bit over, Don. Um, I can see everybody. Mm -hmm. That's fine, Janet. Did you want to share a song? Um, well, we thought we'd share the song at the very end. I think okay. um, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So now, um, uh, questions. Um, I think there was a question in the chat. I think Quanta asked about. Is it possible to have the names of the peace couple? Oh, I see. I think they're asking about you and Ned, Janet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can put our names in. <laughs> it's uh, okay. Janet and Ned Kundal. I'll put our, e our email too, treesforchildren at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. So I should just mention that um, Ned and I met in Africa about almost 40 years ago in Cameroon with us both planting trees. <laughs> and then we had our children in Papua New Guinea, again, planting trees. And then we were in Tanzania and our children, you know, learned Swahili before the English. <laughs> and uh, so the tree planting thing has been with us for a long time. And, um, but I have to say that in Uganda, the best of, the local people to come together like this is just phenomenal and um and we're not we we had to come back um earlier than we thought and and they're just continuing it's just you know i don't need to be there <laughs> they call me jaja which means grandma and um i feel so loved and uh, and i know that they love each other and that's that's why they care so much because i can sit I can't hardly send them, we're pensioners, you know, I can't send them much money. So they're doing well, all of this, you see, they're doing from their own hearts with very, very limited shared resources and the donations from the Junior Youth Club in Kansas and some donations from those Kansas friends and some donations from uh, Terry and Jules Corey. I don't think they're on the screen at the moment. Um, but as I said, we're in the middle of doing this big 
project application to uh, carbon streaming for fair trade and ecosystem services. Right. I see lots of hands. <laughs> yeah, lots of hands. So we have um, Mal uh, up in the here. We have Malcolm Lake, uh, Northern Ireland. Yes. Oh yeah. Malcolm, Malcolm. your 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 tree planting junior youth group coordinator is on here somewhere, uh, but I didn't take the, I didn't take the photos yet. But he did plant that that group did plant the hundred trees in Wanyange. Thank you very much. Malcolm wants to. Malcolm has a thing to ask to send to you, please. Uh -huh. the, the, Malcolm does a lot of planting, so he wants. Malcolm, you speak. Uh -huh. Actually, uh, uh -huh. I, I've been planting for a long time with schools, as I think you know. Uh -huh. And um, I, with a with a friend who's a graphic designer, we devised. Uh, a teaching sheet, um, a teaching sheet of 12, 12 pictures and uh, called the functions and benefits of trees, what they do and what they pass on to, to us. So I think you may, you may well be able to use it. And if you yes, give me we definitely want it. <laughs> If, if you give me your email address, I'll send it by email. So you have it. Okay, I'll put it in. It's very easy. Trees for children at Gmail. So it's called Three for children. That's okay. Trees for children at Gmail. Okay, I'll send it to you. There's, there's, there's uh, Thank you so much. Sheet. It's a Thank you. And there's, um, there's an additional sheet as well. It's thank you so much, Malcolm. And thank you for helping us with that 100 trees in Wanyange. It was wonderful for the junior youth group. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for doing it. Keep planting. <laughs> yeah. Thank I see you. Stephen. I see Stephen next. Is Stephen the next one? Yes. <laughs> OK. And you. Stephen, you'll need to unmute. Uh, yes, thank you, Janet. Thank you, Ned. That was wonderful. Um, and I'm very, very pleased to see Teresa's role in it, as always. Um, basically, um, the question about long longevity. Um, here, young people are planting trees that are growing in nurseries and they, they won't be planted out for some time. Uh, will you be using um, junior youth groups and so on to, to keep that continuity? Uh, or do you think that already sufficient um, adults and such are supportive that um, these same children will continue with these projects in the future? Yeah, the adults are key for sure. The coordinators are key and the girls for climate action their focus actually is training the climate captains and the climate captains graduate high school and continue being climate captains going around and, and helping for the survival of the trees and because the trees are given as birthday gifts these children are not like American children oh, <laughs> they don't yes. get anything birthday. so they're very special to them and also things grow so fast in Uganda within about four years you have a you have a bearing jackfruit tree and jackfruit is very delicious and very nutritious. Yeah, and Ned will talk about that too. Well, for the small farmers, the challenge is they want the trees to keep going for 20 or 30 years for the carbon benefits. So the danger is they might be cut down for firewood or charcoal. But if they're valuable trees, such as cocoa underneath, and Cezy, Cezy, by the way, is Mysopsis emini, or if it's jackfruit trees, once they get going, we feel that it will be some of the most valuable resources the farmers have, so they're not going to cut them down. Yes, I mean, I mean that's the same approach as you know we take in the International Tree Foundation, but I'm just wondering about the longevity of the nurseries and so on, and also whether you keep uh, all the different groups talking to one another, that's another thing. Yes, we do. We have this group called 
on WhatsApp. So the what's on um, that's how most people keep touch is WhatsApp. And so we have everybody that you see on the screen today just about is on WhatsApp. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So we do keep in touch a lot and so the longevity is there and and um, you see Peter Kibuka's mom was in that one of those films there with the nurseries and so her grandchildren are running the children's classes and she's kind of the matriarch of the place and very enthusiastic and so it, people are close as families there so they, they definitely help each other out. Now Jonita has got, a, a, she says the trees, the climate captains are both in school and out of school. We're also trying to as much as possible get people and um, and emotionally schools, emotionally attached to the schools. Yeah. Thank you, Janita. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Ned. Okay. Um, so next is uh, Quanta. Yes, thank you. Um, I would like to actually get in touch with you or someone that is involved in this project in Uganda and give a presentation virtually to our uh, in uh, Charlotte International Rotary Club and they have fundings for projects uh, especially international projects our group uh, consists of 11 internationals and um, so I'm going to send you I see that I have you on my email list I'm going to send you um, a uh, message and include the, the speakers committee in them and if you can give a you know talk and then we can see what we can do from here you know uh, uh, they have uh funding for international as well as local purposes but this would really be wonderful and maybe what i will do is i will also try to see if there are some uh, sister communities the rotary communities in uganda and then get them involved because we have done this in india and it, we raised as much as $74,000 from one club alone to do <laughs> cataract surgeries. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this goes, um, they have seven areas in Rotary and one, one of them, actually two of them falls in, into your project, which is education and also environment. So I just wanted to um, let you know, you will hear from me via email and I include Helmut Schilknecht and also Sofia Carbano. Her husband is a North Carolina's uh, consular for Italy. So I, I just wanted to let you know. Are you in Kampala right now yourselves? No, we were staying in um, Jinja area, Bukaya. And mm -hmm. I'm also a member of Rotary Club there, the source of the Nile Rotary Club. I used to go to that. Oh, every that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But we're actually back in Canada at the moment. But Tony and Jonita and so on are are in Uganda. They're they're Ugandan, they're continuing. And okay. I, I'd like to give an opportunity for Jonita to respond to Steve Vickers' okay. questions there and for oh. Tony to say something about the longevity of the of the children's programs too. So Please go ahead, Jonita, if you're there. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I, I'm late. I was on the move. I was coming to Ethiopia for a meeting tomorrow. But good that uh, I'm here today. So for Langevity the projects, we are making sure that we train climate captains in every community. Here we train uh, mostly out of school young people between the age of um, 15 to 26 and we take them through a two weeks intensive training on how to one on the climate science but also the importance of trees so we want them to be self-driven in that they know why they should do it and uh, these climate captains are the stewards in these communities they initiate projects as well in their communities they are the leaders and at the same time they take care of the trees and monitor uh, these uh, trees. So that is how we are ensure, ensuring that we have a higher survival rate, but also we create campaigns that give people an emotional attachment to their trees. For example, 
In 2019, we ran the biggest campaign where we had the Chavazinga, that is the king in Busoga, to, contribute, to also be part of the birthday tree campaign. And uh, the people who are like the subjects that serve the king were also taking a tree for the king. And for us, that was an emotional attachment. And uh, for this, because uh, people are attached to it, then they, they are going to take care of the tree without you kind of uh, moving up and down to make sure that they grow. So that is like uh, one way we are doing it, but also in schools, we are having orchard weeks where we are telling uh, school administrators the importance of trees, fruit trees, and therefore they allow us to plant fruit trees in their, in their gardens and then create orchards so that we, first of all, um, curb carbon, but at the same time, uh, uh, contribute to beating food insecurity in the schools. So for a school, for every end of year, then we have a fruit bonanza and children uh, feast on the fruits that, you know, they have grown. But sometimes you get them from outside, like in one year, a tree is not yet ready. Uh, it's not yet already bearing fruit. So we get them from outside as they eat them. So the concept is that they grow the fruit trees and then at the end of every year, they kind of just enjoy the fruits. And then that gives them a bit of an attachment to these trees. So that is how we are ensuring that there is an emotional attachment. We are also in touch with the Rotary Club of Ginger. We are already planning on a certain project with the women here as well. So we'll be also cool to, you know, get involved with other Rotary Clubs uh, else, uh, elsewhere. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonita. Um, and also, by the way, congratulations on that award. You just got to be one of the 100 most influential young Africans. That's quite an honor. Thank you so much. Uh, Tony, I don't know if you want to say anything. Tony is the mastermind of the IT training. He's got all the youth sitting there behind him. And uh, I don't know if you've got network today. Oh, you can just talk. You can just wave at us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably we've been fighting with the next one. Do you want Do you want Emma to speak about the IT? Run, say hello. Wow. I can take it off right now because uh, I have the internet now. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Great. Do the youth want to share uh, anything? Thank you. Okay. Not really. Uh, thank you so much for the day, for the presentation and everything. I am so really, really very happy for what has been going up here. Uh, we've been having issues with our network. It's very cloudy here in Uganda and around Bukaya. So our network is on and off. I've tried all lines possible because I thought I would uh, get stable in a few minutes, but it's been on and off. Um, about the IT, it started as a joke and from nowhere, we, we, we reach a point of, uh, of success. I call it success because we didn't expect to have uh, such a big number. We have over 40, 50 students we teach behind us here. Uh, someone say hi. We have over 50 students remain back here. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't serve you tea, but we had our tea and our, our bread. We didn't give any one of you because you're very far. Uh, about the IT, we are very, very happy for the little donations that the cancer team, the junior youths of uh, cancers uh, donated to us. They offered us five laptops and they have, we have been able to use the same. We have been able to use a few of the resources we have uh, to put up an impact on over, uh, of, on over 100 students, I guess, because we have students in Bukaya and we have students in uh, Nachiviz. Uh, and we, uh, we started with the five laptops and we shared over 10 students could share only five, one laptop, uh, like 10 students, one laptop. But uh, we thank Labdu. Uh, it also sent us five more laptops. And we are very happy to announce that uh, uh, Martha 
uh, from uh, USA also offered us more two laptops, but uh, we haven't received them from uh, USA. We just need a traveler to have them because mommy is not right. It's not, uh, it's not so close to her return to Uganda. We want to thank you everyone. Right now I am here to request, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk much. I want to request anyone on here. We have a lot, many students and we have a lot, many challenges. Uh, we, the first biggest problem we have here is few laptops. And right now we are into the mayor's office. I don't know where, whether he's not offended for us to be in off his office up to this time, but we have to be here because he offered us a free space and we must be here. I have Peter with me here. I have, uh, I have uh, Innocent behind here. Uh, Innocent is uh, the person behind our background music. He sings very well. He's a very good musician and a good writer. Uh, I have many students with me. Uh, and I want to thank you, everyone. Mama, thank you for bringing us onto this platform. Everyone has a request here, but if by the time we finish up with these requests, then it will be midnight. I will not talk too much. <laughs> I will not talk too much. We have many students. We have few resources. Some of them come from far. Some of them, we offer them transport. Some of them walk long, long distances to reach the classes. And is Maria, uh, there? is Maria there that walks eight kilometers? Sure, sure. Maria, where are you? Oh, Maria is here. Let's go, Maria. She walks, she walks eight <laughs> kilometers to come to this class, dear friends, and eight kilometers. Uh, we have we have here too. She also walks from a distance to come here. And we have Ruth too. She also comes from a long distance. And it's already almost 11 in the night, but we have to uh, find a way. We have to find a way of getting back, uh, get them back home. So we have a problem of facilitation, the transportation, mostly the internet. I suffer with the internet. I disturb my mom very much every time asking for internet because I do a lot of work. I have to teach with the internet. I have to put everything together because of the internet. We have four teachers, volunteers, and they also have families. Uh, we are trying to find them. Mama sometimes speaks from her pension to give us a a little things we cry every time to help us. Mama, my child is sick. Mama, this is going not fine. Mama, this is not fine. And, <laughs> and she takes and she gets from her own funding for her pension to give us. So that because she loves to see us continuing with this project. So if anyone is here with uh, ways we can raise funds to have this class continue forever and ever, then it will be the greatest. In there. Thank you so much. May God bless you. That, that's why we're working on the fair trade yeah. and ecosystem services, because if they can earn from planting these trees, because it's helping our carbon sequestration, so we have a better climate, then, then it it's, it's, will be something that we can continue to. Anyway, I see Mark Griffin in Northeast USA has his hand up. Hello, everyone. A uh, wonderful presentation. Um, what I, I think what I saw when I review, I saw that you are uh, planting trees for carbon sequestration mainly, which is wonderful. And you're also doing sustainable agriculture, which is wonderful. Um, so you're doing those two things that are solving many things at the same time. When it comes to applying for resources, I think we have to be careful on what is uh, what the causes are. Sometimes it's economic development and poverty in general and development. And sometimes it's commercial agriculture is an issue. And also it's climate change. Um, everything isn't climate change. Some things are not. And I think um, you'll be more successful in, in, uh, in uh, gaining funding if, if we're careful about what are the causes? 
if you can, if you want to comment on that. But that's uh, that was my understanding. Thank you. Very nice presentation. I really wanted people to meet the the people behind everything, you know. So these are the people that are carrying doing everything. Girls for Climate Action has been going for seven years. That's way before I was there. And uh, Hussein Ofruz has been going 20 years. It's way before I was there. Just a question of bringing people together that were attracted because of the, of the children. Teresa, Teresa. I don't want to sound negative. I'm just saying if we're careful, we can, we, yeah. we can get better results. Yeah, may I just comment on this commercial agriculture? What we do have in the Basoga Kingdom is quite a lot of sugarcane plantations. And they're really quite damaging because the only people who make money out of them are the owners or the shareholders and the workers and so on get very little money. And the price of sugar has sort of halved recently. I think we all know there's too much sugar in the world anyway. So at least we hope some of the outgrowers for the sugar cane will switch to better crops like cocoa with shade above it or avocados or anything really. Uganda is a very good place for growing things. Yeah. Teresa also has her hand up. Um, oh, sorry, Nancy. Would like to Hello. Thank you. Thank you to the last gentleman who just made his comment. Um, I think it's wonderful that this conversation is not um, just enlightening and inspiring, which we all feel, I'm sure. Sitting here at a few times, we had tears in our eyes. So I'm sure we're all inspired and enlightened. And I appreciate the last comment in suggesting that we um, broaden our vision in terms of how we could apply for funding. But I do think that's something that will take... Um, you know, it'll take systems in place. And I think we're getting better and better as a community to put those systems in place. But it would be wonderful if you could take um, Janet's email and it's in the chat box there. And if you have any very specific, I'd be interested in the meat and potatoes of this, the specific ways in which she might do that. Or we as a group might be able to support her in doing that. Um, I don't wanna take up too much time, but if you could do that, I think it would be very helpful. And then the other thing is we have in our community, I live in a very small community in um, like 26, 36,000 people in Ontario. And we have a Carolinian tree program that was um, done in memory of my daughter. And we wanted to launch a program where we would be able to reline the streets with beautiful Carolinian trees, the type that was here when I was a child. Because of development of our town, Carolinian trees were taken down and um, builders when they build have lots and they build they have to plant one tree per lot which they did but the difference is they plant fast growing trees not the fault of the builder necessarily because when you buy a new house you don't want to wait 40 years for your first tree you'd like it to grow in four or five years which would be things like birch tree that have a much shorter lifestyle uh sorry lifeline so it'll be a full growing tree in just a few years so what ended up happening to our town is the beautiful chestnut trees and all these kinds of trees started to be replenished with um, fast growing and fast dying trees so it's um, nothing in comparison to what this project is, but what we did was we got professional signs and we had these signs put up around the town that said, plant a tree in lieu of giving a gift. And to date, we've planted a thousand trees in the community and people pay a couple hundred dollars for each one of these trees. And then they would send a card to somebody saying a tree is being planted in your honor for your anniversary or your birthday or because someone died. And then from that tree program, I just remember the beautiful last quote that Janet had read from Abdul Baha. But from that tree program, what came out of it that we never expected is something similar to what Janet is saying. So I think it's the idea of growth in trees, that people showed up at these events. And then we ended up having this huge grief counseling thing. The project was born out of, um, in memory of my daughter who was killed in a car accident when she was 17. And we quickly found that a lot of people bought these gifts and planted them when somebody died. Instead of sending flowers to the funeral, they'd plant a tree that would live on. But I have to say two things. One, I'm so impressed with this because our Carolinian tree program, we have all the latest of everything here, I must say. Different local stores were kind enough to plant, to buy beautiful water tanks for us to be able to water them and so on. And we only have a 40% rate of keeping them alive. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, it's a little shame compared to the 92%. So our town has agreed to replace any tree that died. But while we were talking, I definitely, for one, will try to start something in our community. I'll see if I can get people to help me, maybe launch it on my daughter's next birthday, um, something where we can plant trees, but only the tree will actually be planted in Africa. 
and we'll be able to send what we do is we send we have a nice gift and we send a gift card and it says the tree will be planted in your honor and we give them a little plaque and what would be wonderful is if we could create something where we give a plaque here and a plaque there mm -hmm. but anyway um that's one suggestion but if anybody has any kind of suggestions like that one this was born from nine little grade students like just nine students came that missed and loved brandy and from that there's been thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and there's been so many trees planted and parents helped and kids sent to other countries. There's just so much work that's been done from one, one group's initiative. And I think this, what we're talking about today, Janet has all this love in her heart. And what this gentleman who's made a suggestion was suggesting is that we all can bring to this table today, a special gift of what we can give. And it would be so wonderful if Janet, for all her hard work and Ned's hard work, would receive these emails that actually gave suggestions. <laughs> so please write in your emails to her. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> and Teresa, you've had your hand up. And I have to say thank you so much, Teresa, for all your advice over the past couple of years. <laughs> That's a question. Oh, thank you so much, Janet, and uh, great to see Steven, our chair of the board. Uh, I am so impressed to see what all those people are doing and the great work that they are doing. And impressed to see people traveling for kilometers to come and get knowledge. I know that uh, women are traveling kilometers to go and look for firewood. Women are traveling kilometers to go and look for water. We are losing tons and tons of uh, of soils. So there are a lot of issues, but I know that if we work, if we are able to work together as all these organizations, I know we'll be able to sort out most of these issues. Maybe to comment on Mark's question on uh, uh, being careful on these uh, issues on the trees that are being planted and so on. We plant the right trees in the right place, making sure that the choices of trees that are being planted is the trees that are supposed to be planted. I know there are a lot of issues, people planting trees, the wrong trees, planting trees that are destroying uh, rather than helping the environment. I think uh, in terms of capacity building, I know Janet is uh, trying to make sure that and all the other groups trying to make sure we are get, trying to train people and uh, building their capacity so that they can be able to know which trees are they supposed to plant. International Tree Foundation support planting of native trees, making sure that we have, we have a lot of threatened trees in Africa. They are almost disappearing. We need to make sure that we are able to plant them back and also plant trees that are helping in terms of livelihood improvement. Another thing is that we need to remove the burdens, the unpaid work that women are doing to make sure that they have opportunities to go for capacity building. They are able to go to contribute toward landscape restoration. So there's a lot of work that we can be able to do as all of us as organizations. We can be able to do each person. There's no body who is so poor that have nothing to give. So some of us give knowledge. Some of us give uh, other things. But I know that we are going to do a lot. We have sustainable solutions, grassroots sustainable solutions that all of us can do. Thank you so much. I know I can talk a lot and I think I'll have a time next time to be able to contribute, but thank you so much. And thank you, Janet and uh, Tim. Thank you, Teresa. Charles, Charles from Najibizi uh, Bukaya is there? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Janet. And uh, in the same way, thank you so much our viewers and whoever has uh, given in their precious time to attend this uh, gathering. Uh, I'm Charles Kamya, uh, founder of Renard Foundation, but also a very passionate member of uh, Peace. And uh, together with Tony, Peter, uh, Hope, Paul, uh, John, and Alex, and others, we have so much tried to um, uh, to push uh, the few projects that we have so far. We have been developing nurseries, and in the same way, we've been uh, teaching computer, as uh, just Tony and Janet mentioned before. And uh, maybe one little thing that um, maybe I can also talk about is that 
we are teaching these computers to these uh, students or the junior youth. Basically, because you realize uh, the, the world is moving at, uh, at a digitalization, everything is shifting on digital, digitalization. People are being inventive uh, because of uh, the technical know-how of operating a computer. So we are giving them these basics um, to basically be creative uh, people, be creative in, in the societies. You realize more so in the global south, there are challenges of um, unemployment. So if a, a, a child learns about computer and then they start being inventive, this is already a life being sustainable. And also as peace in the same way, we are trying to teach these computers such that they get very conversant with the computers because with the tree planting, we also think about uh, mapping, mapping each and every tree that we plant around. And these students will be the same people to help us while <laughs> mapping these trees, yeah? So um, in the same way, I also want to, to thank whoever is here in this group because this is a global cause. Uh, if climate is affected in Uganda, it will be affected in, also in the same way in Europe or elsewhere. So I love the fact that uh, in this call, we are all uh, people coming from, for example, different generations, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people in the US, people from the Uganda, the old, and of course also the youth, talk about the junior youth, talk about uh, the abode. We have the abode group also here. So this means uh, we are here for a global cause and something that is really, really important. I want to applaud each and every one of us attending this meeting because talking about climate, talking about tree planting is really one big um, solution that we can together uh, resolve and you know make this world a, a better place. You realize mankind has, um, uh, dealt with this climate in so many uh, ways. We have, uh, uh, people have uh, have made deforestations. There is a lot of industrializations and so forth. So if we come up to try to uh, talk about these issues, educate the people in our communities about the dangers of climate change and also the goodness of planting trees, I think this is uh, a good way to go. and. Thank you, everyone. We are so proud of you guys. And yeah, of course, <laughs> thank you so much, Janet, also for putting in your effort. It is really an endless effort from the time I started seeing you um, walking around Bokaya, moving around Jinja, with only one cause of you know bringing everyone together with the little that you have. Tony said you're removing from your little pension and I really also approve that. And so far with what we have done for the month that we've been in operation, ideally you guys have tried a lot, a lot, a lot, not forgetting the team in Kansas. Thank you also so much. And of course, welcoming more people on board. So thank you so much. That is all from me. Um, I'm also joined with Hope. Hope is also a member. Alex and Paul, they are also helping us. We are also working together in the tree planting and the nurseries and also the computer literacy classes. I want to say hello to <laughs> Tita and Tony. Tony, thank you also so much for the tremendous work that you always do every day, every day, every day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see Frank and Tony want to have a last word, but we're actually coming really past due the time, and I want to have time for the youth to sing their song at the end. So maybe Frank can quickly, and then we move to Tony, and then that then you, you guys will sing, and that will be the ending. Huh? So Frank, Frank, would you like to say something? Frank is the junior youth coordinator in Wanyangi area that uh, Malcolm and Vida Lake donated some money so that they could have a hundred trees planted to commemorate the. 100 years of Abdul Baha's passing. Um, so maybe Frank, if you, if you have to unmute Frank. <laughs> okay, hello guys, nice to meet you. Uh, I wanted to share a little about the Junior Youth Spiritual Empowerment Program because that's where basically my interest is. 
these are the ages between 12 and 15. Uh, we actually help them to like to grow spiritually, empower, empowering them to grow spiritually. But we not only look at the part of the spiritual, like that spiritual part, uh, we do a lot of things like uh, service activities, uh, service projects. Now, for instance, uh, it was in the first COVID, like the first lockdown, when these junior youths were at home because schools were closed at that moment. So together with Echo Shelter, we were able to collect tons and tons of bottles within the community and time reached that you could walk with like around the community and fail to find any bottle or polythene. And uh, it was through this service activity that uh, Echo Shelter was able to construct a toilet, sorry, a latrine uh, with bottles uh, uh, within the community. And uh, besides that, uh, we actually, I want to thank Malcolm for, for helping us like for, uh, for, the, for the funds of planting a hundred trees. We actually got more schools and more, like more places where to plant, to plant more trees if, there, if we get a chance to, to get more trees actually. Yeah, that's a little I can share in anyway. Thanks. Thank you, Frank. So last word to, to, to Tony. Tony is the master behind, behind all these videos and everything. He's teaching the youth how to do the videos too. And I, I think if the youth are ready, they could sing a final song at the end, Tony. <laughs> oh, thank you so much once again. Um, they are ready. Maria is ready to lead her, her choir. She calls it her choir. She's the head singer here. <laughs> uh, she's just close by. But before she comes in to start to give you a song to read the song for you guys. Um, Is there anything you wanted to say, Tony? Yes, I am saying something. Uh, in Uganda, I am a, I'm a, I am a street guy. I'm a street boy raised on the streets. Uh, and uh, I've been going through a lot, a lot of, a lot of things to just make sure I am, I graduate from my university. I've been, I've studied throughout my school on a bursary and on scholarships. Uh, but still, after a long struggle of joining the schools, I still got nothing from school. All I have right now in my life, I got it out of school. Even the IT, I, by the time I graduated with the IT, I didn't know anything with the IT. I got my knowledge of IT, but I graduated from school. What do I mean here? I mean that our schools in Uganda are theoretical and they are based to theory. They only teach the words. They only teach you to write down notes. They don't give you the practical. Uh, here the IT comes in. Everywhere, every, all the world right now is technological and everything involves needs computers. That's where the project of IT comes in. We teach the students to learn tree mapping. And the tree mapping is not for the trees. Helps us to uh, it, it helps us uh, monitor the trees we, we what the trees we plant in each and every uh, region where we put them in, and we don't only teach the tree mapping. We have others, uh, other 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 applications and other ways of using IT technology. Because still we find our 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 our, our farmers with the computers go into the villages sometimes most of the farmers we connect with, most most of the people we've connected with into this group of peace we've met them online and this is all because of computers we've met you here today is because of the computers at least one two three students here i have right now i can ask them to connect to zoom without me being present and they will do that and some of my students here, they are in primary section. But you can go out there and you find a university graduate without even knowing how to switch on a computer. 
So I request you, at least if you can provide more laptops, old laptops that you don't use there, don't keep them in the house, send them to Uganda. What you call old, in, old with you, what you call useless with you, we shall make it useful. It will make some child a life, a better life. It will make some farmer in Uganda a better person. Sometimes even the old phones, don't throw them away. Send them to us. Our farmers need phones to connect with the tree mapper. They, they need the laptops to connect to the Zoom. They need Wi-Fi to connect to the Zoom. Some of them are facing network issues because they don't have resources. They don't have the equipment to connect to us. No farmer will find how to sell their cotton, how to sell their food, how to sell their things. In Uganda right now, a bar of soap is at 6,000 Ugandan shillings. It has hiked up to the most highest price ever since I was born right now. But someone would love to import something. Someone would love to export their goods. We grow coffee here and sell them to the government at a very cheap price. And they sell them at a high price to some other countries out there because we don't have access to farmers. We don't have access to the real market. We, when we teach our youths and they grow up right now knowing the technology, knowing how to use technology, knowing how to use the the online marketing and how to connect to the, to, 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 to the market, we shall not be fooled by a government that wants to suck blood out of us. We shall have students, we shall have citizens that can stand by their own. They will not wait to go to the government to find, uh, to find, uh, to find customers, to find buyers. They will go direct to the market by themselves. So if we teach them from childhood to the level we are right now, we shall have a generation that does not look like us, but that is better than us. Thank you so much. Let me give you to Maria so that Maria can uh, give us a song uh, with the others. Maria. Wait, 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 Tony, there's one, Jay Craig has been doing a lot of tree planting work, so I have to let him have a word. All right. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what, I'm an urban planner, I've, uh, I'm a landscape architect, and I've really been uh, studying the Baha'i teachings and, uh, and the ideas of Baha'i's um, community transformation. And when I was listening to what you were saying about the coffee and the, uh, you know, not being able to find the markets and uh, get a good price, the, what, what we're, I started the Baha'i Agricultural Network, and part of uh, there's something that goes along with that is the Baha'i Community Corporation. And the Baha'i Community Corporation, in the situation that you were just talking about, if the local people that are growing the coffee could incorporate, and somebody could buy shares in the corporation, Baha'is could buy shares in the corporation, and you could get your uh, they could buy a truck and get your um, product to market and maybe to the coast or ship it out to the Baha'is in the United States or somewhere, but the distribution center, there, there can be a connection on both ends mm -hmm. of a, of a Baha'i global economy mm -hmm. where uh, because we're all networked and in, in a kind of the same structure as the administrative order or they were all leaves of one tree. And so economically, um, we could make that happen. I'll share. Mm -hmm. Through a community corporation that would help the local people mm -hmm. take control of their own product. Mm -hmm. And um, and through okay. collaborating with with other Baha'is on a global scale. Cocoa is another one too for chocolate and also yeah. soap. My daughter-in-law makes soap and cooking oils and so on from produce. She buys the produce from the farmers, seeds, and she presses the oils. And then she makes, actually Maria's mom <laughs> works with my daughter-in-law and, and they make skin care and so on. But they, again, the market is the issue. Yeah. So and what you're saying is very useful. Yeah, so, so the yeah. so the Baha'i Agricultural Network is about yeah. a local community. 
yeah. and it supports the local community and it's a learning community yeah. developing the skills that it determines that it's going to develop but it's agricultural based because the buyers have been told by every all the founders that that's the way that we need to do that and i can yeah. see the wisdom in that and um so the the local communities are organized all doing what they want to do but then at a different hierarchy there could yeah. be the african region that, that where, where they're dealing with uh all the different local communities supporting them and then at another level there could be the global network so the information going back and forth from the top to the bottom or or goods and services going back and forth to the top and the bottom. But yeah. again, it creates a learning community where people can collaborate and coordinate and uh, make things happen yeah. and take the money away from the corrupt uh, world order that, that we're all unsatisfied with. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jay. Okay. We, all, Don, we, need to, we, need, we need to connect <laughs> with each other and maybe put our put your emails in the chat so you can connect after after the meeting and continue this conversation and yes. projects. All Thank these, you. All these great ideas that we come up with now. Thank you so much. Yes, we are going to have a song. We're going to finish out with a song. I just want to mention that next month um, we will be having a uh, another presentation next month, uh, March 27th, I believe it is, it's the last Sunday um, in March. And that presentation is, um, we'll have Anne uh, Moshel and Lee Moavenza Day, who are going to be presenting uh, from a reading group that was uh, uh, based on a, a reading group book, um, The Half Has Never Been Told. And it's about capitalism and uh, it's about slavery and the making of American capitalism. So we're real interested. Uh, they actually put together a presentation for the ABS conference last year, which didn't get accepted, but they're going to present for us. And so we're really excited to hear that. It's really, uh, it was really a wonderful reading group. And I encourage everyone here, if you're not involved in reading groups, you can start your own reading group, but we learned so much through those reading groups. Anyway, we're going to finish out now, and I thank everyone for coming. It's 11 o'clock at night. Yes, it's getting very late, I'm sure. Sorry. Sorry, kids. Thank you so much. Please, please come. We have a beautiful song. There's so beautiful music there. Oops. <clears throat> Be a house and be a street. Be an everlasting thing. Is this true that we will do? Happiness will come to give. Such a heart, such a heart. Every day, every day. Is Such a heart every day, every day.
From the children's class book three. Thank you, everyone. You can, you can sing Thank you, everyone. Together. Um, Innocent has something to say. Oh, okay. We have one more song that says, we fix from the prayer books that says, uh, let, your, let your hearts burn with the loving kindness for all may come across your sight. So the song goes in this way. Don't want to let you down. You can be my friend. Don't want to break your heart. I love you no matter where you're from. Oh, how you look. You can be my friend. I love you. If you were my friend, now broke your heart. May you forgive me and we continue moving on with your life. My heart is burning right. Love and kindness. Oh, may come across to my back. Can you be my friend? Now, family, welcome everyone. Don't you be afraid. You love you, no matter where you go. Oh, I do. You can be my friend. Love you. I still have another one more song. I have another one more song that is all about uh, climate change. Oh, very nice. We need to hear that. Right. So um, the songs come in this way. A lot to do in now. Uh, a lot. <clears throat> a lot. Yeah, it's coming this way. 
one people, one planet. We have a pro, we have a challenge with the climate unstable. One people, one planet. Again, we can't stable bad climate. One people, one planet. Can we join our hands for the climate change? To slavery back. Thank you, Innocent. We have to let everyone go. This is very African that we sing in. One climate. I love that. Okay. Thank you for the beautiful music. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, no, There's it's great. Oh, sorry for that. So next time I... I, I feel like we just made history. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> this was All great. Right. Powerful, powerful <laughs> meeting. Thank you so much for going. this. They have school in the morning. It's almost midnight there. <laughs> oh, Lord. This was a party. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Oh, <laughs> awesome. You. Next right. time, we'll wow. talk to some Africans. The last friend. Right. <laughs> Love Thank it. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Don't be sad, and so we loved it. Thank it you. It was beautiful. Oh, beautiful. please, beautiful music. Way to end it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Africa. Thank you, everybody, and the happy Ayamaha and happy for us. Yes. Thank you so much. Linda is there too. My goodness. Yeah. So, nice. so beautiful. Thank you. Very inspiring. Thank you. Mm -hmm.